live. What is up, Flea City family? Art and I are just like sitting here having a good old time, and you're like, yo, do you want to go live on YouTube and like hang out with our foodie family, make dinner, and have a good old time? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So we prep some food, we fired up the lights, we put my microphone on, and we're live. We're live on Thursday night. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you're making for dinner. Art and I have had a crazy busy day, but you know what? Nothing caps off a day like hanging out with our foodie family. Right, Art? That's right. That's right, homie. So Can they hear you? Like yes. That? Let's do a couple things. Can you hear me? And does the video look good? Leave a comment in the description box. But we got Croatia. We got Darji. I've been to uh, Dubrovnik, Croatia, and I'm one-third Croatian along with uh, Lithuanian and Ukrainian. We got Phoenix in the house watching from the moon. Whoa! Was that maybe the ghost of... Uh, uh, one of the uh, lunar uh, astronauts there. <laughs> uh, hello, hello from Vancouver, California, South Florida. We got Wisconsin. I'm a badger in the house, so I always love my Wisconsin cheese heads. Fellow Chicago in here. Felicity, it's her first time. So I guess all is well. Hearing me loud and clear from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Let's see here. Hey, hey, from my home to yours, New York in the house. Things are going great. So this is going to be a chill session. Art and I just got back from two grocery stores. You'll be very happy to know that we filmed our healthy Costco haul part two, healthy spring cleaning, healthy products to buy at Costco and what to avoid. It went awesome. Whether you want to like uplift or jumpstart your diet and like do some spring cleaning, spring uh, clean eating, that video is going to hook you up. Then we went to a Walmart and we filmed a really cool video about eggs. We broke down the difference between caged, cage free, free range, pasture-raised, organic, non-GMO, certified humane, vegetarian, all that good stuff. And that was a really cool video too. Now we're back and we're making this. These are beautiful Australian grass-fed lamb uh, loin chops. And they're basically called T-bones because they look like miniature T-bone steaks. And it's the same thing. This is the filet side, incredibly tender and soft. This is the New York strip side. Tons of delicious fat and good flavor in there and it cooks just like a steak, except it's miniature, it's a baby. So last night we made lamb blade chops, or shoulder chops, which uh, can either be cooked like a steak or low and slow braised, but this one is more like a steak. We're gonna reverse sear it in the oven and then pan sear it. And the reason why we are doing the stream is because they have these at Costco, 100% grass-fed Australian uh, lamb loin chops. They have lamb chops and leg of lamb. And you know, like, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Easter's coming up. And what's a big protein on Easter, Art? What's a big protein to eat on Easter? Lamb. lamb, right? So I thought we'd make this again. Plus, my good buddies from Aussie Beef and Lamb are flying me next week down to Australia to visit the farmlands of grass-fed beef and lamb farms. We're going to Sydney. We're going to Melbourne. So I thought it'd be cool to use their beautiful lamb and make a recipe. So leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from, what you're making. Uh, what do you think about seasoning cast iron with Crisco? Um, we'll talk about that later, but I would rather use like avocado oil or grapeseed oil for that. Oh, Michelle just bought some grass-fed uh, lamb loin chops today. Very cool. The price for these at Costco is next level. The price of the lamb chops, rack of lamb there is unbelievable and they're big fat chops. They're absolutely gorgeous. Connecticut's in the house, my friend Cynthia. Honduras, Honduras. Honduras. Que paso, Honduras en la casa. All right, we got Philly cheesesteak in the house. Tokyo, the UK. Stephanie, a first time. Let's all be easy on Stephanie, not make it nice and easy on her. If you're ready to see some cooking, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to use the super chat button there, it's a great way to donate and support to the uh, channel. It'll get your highlight uh, comment there. And... Also make sure if you haven't pre-ordered the cookbook yet, I'm gonna put the link right here. This is our new keto meal prepping cookbook. Amazon link is there. You guys have already made it a number one new release. Make, let's make it a number one bestseller coming up. So I have the oven preheating at 350 degrees. These, like I said, are lamb loin chops. They're absolutely thick cut, beautiful, nice marbling, New York strip on one side, filet on the other. Fuzzy and breaking up. Interesting. Uh, is that anyone else having problems with the picture? Or is that just Sandra? 
Maybe Sandra tried going into the HD settings and select HD. If you're on cellular right now, it probably is gonna not do HD unless you tell it. Yes, there's a little gear setting there. You can change the setting maybe to HD. So I'm gonna pinch over some yummy salt. This is unrefined kosher real salt from Utah. I'm absolutely loving that. Then we'll crack over some official Flav City black pepper. And if you saw last night for the lamb shoulder chops, we made a, we made a Moroccan spice rub. We seared them, pan roasted them, and then butter basted them. You can do the same exact thing for this, but I thought I'd just mix it up. But hey, when has too much butter ever been a bad thing, Art? Has anyone ever said that? Never. Thank you. So a little more salt on this side. And also look at this, these are really thick. So don't forget to season the sides here because you're gonna bite through this entire side piece and you want every little bite, every morsel to be seasoned. I feel like a lot of home cooks make the mistake of under seasoning their food. And we talk about that in a lot of videos. Lamb doesn't come pre-seasoned. Uh, beef doesn't come pre-seasoned. You gotta season that food aggressively because it makes the food taste more like itself and beef and lamb love salt. They love it. So let me wash my hands and then I'm gonna crack over some pepper. And do y'all know what reverse searing is? And do y'all know what the benefits of doing that is? So basically, instead of pan searing this first and then chucking it in the oven, we roast it at 350 degrees until it hits the ideal internal temperature that we want. For lamb, it's 140 for me. Then we take it out and we sear it in a really hot cast iron pan the thinking is that the sear mark doesn't go too deep into the lamb and it's a beautiful medium from top to bottom or medium rare if you like it. So this goes in the old oven and I think Art, we should probably put a probe thermometer in there. What do you think? Probably. So this is how I know and how I make sure that I never overcook lamb. We talked about it last night. You don't be a hero, yo. You use a probe thermometer. I always I have one or two in the kitchen. This one's gotta be at least five years old. The beauty is that the thermometer goes in there and it tells you the temperature currently inside and the temperature of the target. And it has a timer too, so like it's a no brainer. So I'm gonna take my beautiful lamb here and just go right into the center of the chop. Don't go in the bottom, don't go in the top, don't hit the bone, just make sure it's in the middle and then close it up. And the beauty of that is it can stay in the oven the whole time. I plug it in here. I'm gonna set my target temperature art to 140. And just for curiosity, I wanna see how long it takes. So right now it's room temperature, it's 57 degrees. I don't know. What's your guess, Art, on how long that's gonna to take to get to 140? I'm gonna say uh, minimum 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm saying 30 to 35 minutes, which means we need stuff to do. So we got some Brussels sprouts to cook, we got some roasted beet salad to make. We kind of just are winging this, right? It's kind of like a pantry uh, raid or like a fridge raid. Whatever's in there, you make. So I thought it'd be really cool to take these cut uh, Brussels sprouts and show you my insanely crispy way of making Brussels sprouts. We have a YouTube video about that. Basically you have them, you put them in a medium hot cast iron pan with copious amounts of ghee and oil and you sear it like a steak and it gets so crispy and roasted there. It's so delicious. If you think you don't like Brussels sprouts, I tell people, try this method and you'll be a believer. And then we were at Costco and I saw these organic roasted beets. They're steamed beets. And I figured, you know what? I think that'd be so easy to use and make a beet salad out of it. It's not keto, but it is paleo. And if we toss that with a tahini dressing, which is the Middle Eastern kind of sesame seed paste, and some onions and some citrus and some nuts, it would be a lovely crunchy salad. So keep leaving, oh, let's see here. I have high blood pressure. I skip all salt when I cook. No, so you don't skip all salt. You have the amount of salt and at the end, you squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there and that lemon kind of replaces the salt and adds a nice acidic pop. That's what you wanna do. Never skip the salt completely, but always use raw salt, not processed refined salt. Any salt that's white, it's been bleached and all the minerals are gone and you're not doing yourself any favor because it actually has more salt per tablespoon than raw salt or sea salt. Let's see, Bobby, can you recommend a good mix master? Oh, I like the, I like the KitchenAid seven cup food processor. It's really, really good. Um, I am starting my keto diet tomorrow. Do you have any snack suggestions? Well, I don't want to plug it, but like I put in before, this cookbook 
that is coming out has some really cool snack recipes for keto cauliflower tots, keto biscotti, um, keto muffins, keto bread. Uh, we have a ton of those snack recipes and 125 plus low carb keto recipes that actually taste good. We're going to rock the house when this thing launches May 15th. Ah, let's see here. Do I think real salt is good for a thyroid? Um, I think it doesn't have iodine. I think you don't need to eat table salt for the iodine because it's a really bad way to ingest the iodine because it's mixed in with really crummy salt. I would find a iodine supplement and then use really good salt like this. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, biscotti is really, really good. It seems like you really focus on crispy. How important is texture? Art, how important is texture? Uh, very much so. It's very, if, texture is where it's at, right? It's all about Team Crunch. Because Art always says. If you're not on Team Crunch, you're not in our bunch. Exactly. Team Crunch is the way to go because a lot of food is like soft, mushy, creamy. And by adding texture, it adds flavor and a nice crunch and really makes it fun to eat. So I'm on Team Crunch. I'm on Team Salt, Crunch, Heat, Acid, and fat. That's what I'm on. Like the book. That book and that show on Netflix is the bomb. So I think we should make the beet salad first because these won't take as long. Um, so let's go. We're going to totally wing this. I have never made this before, but I think it's going to be absolutely grand. So let's open this up here. Thank you, Texas girl. That's the thing. We make tito, uh, keto taste good because it doesn't have to taste bad. Everyone thinks when you're on a diet, it has to mean you're limiting flavor, you're limiting creativity. We don't do that. We make such healthy food that tastes good, you don't even realize you're on a diet. And that's why I think people are gonna love this cookbook. So let's cut this over the sink because I think this might bleed everywhere. I actually normally roast my own beets, but hey, you know what? If you can get a semi-homemade hack at the store and buy lovely organic, steamed beets to save the day, I'm all for that. Sometimes when I roast my own, I use golden beets, and those are really pretty. But, I mean, these were pretty cheap at Costco, and I couldn't say no. So if you missed hearing me earlier, Art and I had a busy day. We went to Costco. We filmed a new haul video there. That's our second video ever done at Costco, and the theme of this video is healthy spring cleaning eating. We reviewed how many products, Art? Like at least 20 products, many of which I was very happy with and told you guys to buy, and a few I said to stay away from. So that's going to be a great video. Then we went over to the Walmart neighborhood store in, in uh, Lakeview, and we filmed the video all about eggs. And you're like, well, what do you mean about eggs? Well, we described the difference between caged eggs, cage-free, pasture-raised, free-range, organic, non-GMO, uh, certified humane, vegetarian feed, and all that jazz. Because I don't think a lot of people understand the differences, and I think people just buy any old organic eggs and thinking those are good. It's not the case. You could actually buy really good pasture-raised eggs, sometimes for the same price of, as organic, and they're better. So we're going to tell you about that. A little spoiler alert. The Whole Foods 365 brand eggs are not good quality. Even the organic ones are very low rated because they never go outside. They're confined. So people just think, oh, I'm going to buy those. Those ones aren't good. I'll bet I'm going to have a lot of pasture raised eggs in Australia next week. I need to do an official announcement because I want to meet up with some fans in Sydney. I'm going down early. And I want to meet up with anyone who lives there because I need someone to show me around and show me where to eat. I'm going to be all by my lonesome. My man Art's not coming. Desi's not coming. Let's see how these taste. That's, that's really good. Just video stopped here. Is that the way in yours too or not? Mm. You all think the video's all right here? Oh, he says it's back. Okay, good. Just bought pasture-raised eggs this evening. Good job, my friend. Beet greens are really good. Yeah, you can saute beet greens like spinach and it's absolutely delicious all right we got 300 people on here what should people do art if they haven't done so yet should share this. sharing is caring let's get more people in here let's see if we can break our record of 444 people on the live stream because we're making seriously good 
keto and paleo grub here, you guys. Greetings from Deutschland. Oh, Deutschland. Danke. Already asked me a question last night. He's like, do you think anyone else does a cooking live stream like this on YouTube? And I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't see too many live streams on YouTube. But does anyone else quite do a live that's so interactive and real time like this? This is actually my favorite way to do a video. I mean, I like making the prepared videos and all that stuff, but live stream in the flesh, no edits, no ed anything, that's my preferred way to cook. Kimberly Campbell raises her own poultry for eggs, best tasting eggs ever. Kim, we're moving next to you. Where are you? That is the best. If you raise your own chickens or you have a friend or a local farm by y'all that makes their own uh, raised chickens, that's the best. Not the grocery store. Locally sourced eggs are the best. Um, do you think that's enough beets for the four of us, Art, or should I do a few more? That's up to you. Uh, I need a ton of beets myself. I'm going to do a few more because they're really, really good for you. So we won't have any live streams for the next two weeks because I'll be in Australia. But we will have videos. Art and I have been working really hard to film videos ahead of time. We have a Target haul video. We have a Fresh Time Market haul video. We have how to cook asparagus, which is perfect timing for the spring. We have how to cook turkey meatballs. Then we have the Costco video from today we filmed and the egg video. So I'm like, what else? Gail just told us that Keto Connect does live streams on Sunday. Oh, very cool. Do they do cooking? I like Keto Connect. I follow them. They're really cool. Is your pop coming for dinner? Um, yes. I think not tonight because my friend Paul's coming and I don't have room for five people, but I'll make it up to Johnny. Don't worry about it. Beets allowed in the keto diet. No, right? beets are not. So this is a paleo side dish, but not a keto. And I'm okay with that because we do a mix of keto and paleo. All right, so let me put this aside. So whoever was asking earlier about crunch, this is where I want to start putting my crunchaholic hat on because creamy beets, creamy uh, dressing, what can I do to add texture? Well, let's take some almonds and chop those up. In an ideal world, I would toast these almonds in butter, smoked paprika, and cumin, and then chop them up, but I just don't have time for that right now, so I'm just going to chop them. An easier thing would be to roast them, get some more flavor here, but once again, I'm okay leaving them raw. I got a big old bag at Costco. Then I think for some crunch also, we can add some raw red onions. A little bit of red finger pepper. What else can we add to this salad art? Some parsley. Of course. So that looks good. I mean, the cool thing about this salad too is that it's a total make ahead. You can make this, dress it, let it sit overnight. Heck, then the next day it's gonna be just as good, if not better, because it has time to soak up all that yumminess. I'm new to your channel, says Cindy, and she likes it. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Loving my cooking and my energy. No live streams for that long. I'm going to die. <laughs> no, someone actually left a comment that Art read earlier that said, hey, these live streams are too long. Uh, I don't have time for this. I unsubscribed because you did an hour live stream. Who does that? Are you kidding me? Dude, it's a live stream. It's not a 10-minute video. They unsubscribed because I had a... Long video. It's okay. We only got like 470,000 more appreciative fans, right? Uh, how are we doing on this? So 69 degrees. It's going really slow and we're 12 minutes in. Let's take some red onions. Hey, y'all, if you haven't done so yet, leave a comment down below. You got to let us know where you're watching from. We have some people from all around the world. You got to let us know what you're making for dinner and all that good stuff. So let's just finally slice a red onion here. If you want it to be fancy, you can soak this red onion in cold ice water. All right, what does that do? Takes away some of the shock. Yes, takes away some of that initial raw flavor. That way you're not gonna have onion breath and your boo won't give you a little kissy kissy later. But I'm okay with that because my boo likes onions. So we'll put that in there. Then let's add this. This is my favorite thing. So people always ask me, what these are and where to get them. This is a red finger pepper. You know, like, hello, my pretty. They always have them at Mexican markets or I get them at Whole Foods. 
I live very close to two Whole Foods, so I usually get them there. But Mexican markets will always have these and red uh, Fresnos and red jalapenos. They're really, really delicious. Somebody made your seared chicken thighs tonight. Ooh, nice. The uh, boneless ones or the bone on, skin on? Okay. Maybe, maybe hey, let us know. Because my recipe for bone on, skin on, crispy skin chicken is so bomb, it's crazy. Andrea L. knows what's going on. She says, come on, there should be over 300 likes by now. <laughs> exactly, Andrea. Thank you. Right? We ain't messing around. We're making real grub in real time and having a good old time. Bone in, skin on. Oh, good job. So with that method, you take the chicken thigh with the bone on skin on. You pan sear it in a cast iron pan, skin side down for eight minutes. Oh, I think my friend Paul is here. I think Paul is in the house. We're at tree, tree. Tree, tree, tree. Nice. You take the chicken thigh, pan sear it, put it in the oven, skin side down, flip it, let it finish cooking, and it's done. Paul David Sipples in the house. Nice, Paulie, say hi to everyone. We're live on YouTube right now. Paul's had a big day because he made his debut in a Flav City video. He yes. came with us to Walmart and he helped lend his expertise to the egg video, dropping some serious knowledge about nutritional value of eggs. Right, yeah. Paul? He's a valuable member of the team and he takes his shoes off when he gets into the house. Are you talking about yourself? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Uh, somebody just asked about your knife. Ah, this knife. This is a Japanese shun knife. It's part of their series called the Hikari. This is a Japanese hornet's nest, and hornet's it's absolutely beautiful. The wood is gorgeous, and it smells like birch. Very, very nice. It's about a $300 knife, but I love it. The kitchen is my playground. These are my toys. I don't care about fancy cars. Come on in here, Paul. Laura Dar says, oh! Oh, <laughs> knife looks a little dangerous. Uh, the, uh, a sharp knife is actually a safe knife. Ah, yeah. is that Ginsu? It's not a Ginsu, Paul. No, yeah, it's the not. Ginsu are actually the best knives, at least from what I know. Ah, good to know. Okay. Yes, they, ne they actually never need sharpening. <laughs> uh, Cynthia points out yesterday the news said that eggs are not good for you. They're bad for you. Ooh. Ooh not, well, factory farmed eggs certainly aren't good for you. But Take a seat, Paul. If she listened to my talk on eggs, she might know that pastured eggs are much higher in vitamin A, vitamin E, beta carotene, as well as omega-3s. 21 times the amount of omega-3s that factory farmed eggs have. So she might want to look into that. Yeah, he already said 21 times the yes. amount of omega-3s in a pasture-raised egg versus a conventional egg. That's insane. So what do you say to people who are like, yeah, but they're more expensive? Well, the cost per milligram of vitamin A and vitamin E is actually much less with the more expensive eggs. And you can even look at the Mother Earth News study that did a study of Polyface Farms eggs that is Joel Salatin's farm, who's an organic farmer. So it's really good to look into that. Very good, Paul. So even though it's more expensive initially, it's cheaper because your body is soaking up more nutrition and you stay healthier in the long run, right? I would love to see a cost per milligram of vitamin A and vitamin E shown, not just the cost per ounce. Well said. That'd be very good. Well said, Art. Uh, this is Paul. your show. I don't want to take over. No, it's okay, Paul. Yeah. Paul wants, Paul's going to have a new segment, hopefully, called Paul's Two Cents. Uh, no, take out the hopefully. Oh. <laughs> it's already been announced. Okay, and, good uh, to know. You know, I'm starting to uh, come into my own here. So uh, well, I'd say so. I would say, take a seat right here, Paul. I can't. Well, I'm still a little shy. <laughs> uh, wash your hands just in, just in case we need you to chop or something. Uh, Cleanliness is godliness. Yeah, I don't chop, but I'll wash my hands anyway. <laughs> um, so I seasoned, here's some towels for you, Paul. Oh. You I seasoned the salad with really nice Malden sea salt. Another pure, unrefined salt from England, and it's famous for its di pyramid. pyramid. I always say diamond. Pyramid crystals that are really crunchy and great for uh, adding texture to a dish. So I added that, some salt. Now you could just do an olive oil dressing, but this is tahini sauce. We took runny tahini, added lemon, garlic, water, salt, and pepper, and buzzed it up with a hand blender. So this is like their version of mayonnaise in the Middle East. And, yeah, that's uh, real salt from- uh, pasteurized eggs last. Pasteurized eggs last a long time. They'll last for like a good two to three months. 
So if you make my homemade mayonnaise with a pasteurized egg, it'll last much longer than uh, the non-pasteurized one, which is like a week. Real salt. I wonder if you're a member of a salt club, too. I'm not a member of a salt club, no. You probably would. <laughs> so, but I am thinking, speaking of clubs, going to reach over here and grab my olive oil, Paul. Mm. <laughs> nice. Paul always makes fun of me because I'm a member of the Olive Oil Club, and they actually just delivered a new shipment from Spain. So I want to make this really creamy dressing here, so I'm going to add some olive oil. Don't forget the special promotion. That's right. That's right. So I'll put the link in the comment section. You can get this bottle for a dollar. It's really, really good, and there's no strings attached. I'm not, like, earning any money off of that. They just give it to share. Let me just copy and paste it. So every three months, they send three bottles to your house from different parts of the world. This quarter is from Spain, and it's the best EVOO you'll ever try. That's why I love raising my own chickens, and we've been talking about raising our own chickens for the meat, too. So Kimberly raises her own chickens. Oh, really nice. Yeah. You might get a backyard with chickens one day, too, yourself. I, I would love that. You never know. I would love that. So let's make a really creamy dressing out of that. So we have the tahini. We have some extra virgin olive oil. Let's add some more lemon juice to that. You like those almonds, huh, Paul? Good thing I washed, washed my yeah, hands. I, I, well, I kind of had a feeling you might be eating some uh, almonds and stuff like that. That is really a studio. <laughs> Let me wash this lemon. So, Paul, in the oven we have some Aussie grass-fed lamb chops, mm. lamb loin chops. We're going to make these delicious Brussels sprouts in a minute. I love Aussie beef. I even have an Aussie Beef and Lamb t-shirt. Oh, you do? Yeah. It's a little big on me. I wear it. Uh, it's my bedtime t-shirt. <laughs> so a little bit of lemon juice for acid. Ooh, Sam, Sam brings up a good thing. Bobby, we love your live streaming. However, we just happened upon it. How do we find out oh. when you're live streaming? Well, this one's kind of my fault because it was a last minute kind of thing. But even when I scheduled them 24 to 48 hours, the only way you can get notified is when I put a link in the community tab. And if you don't see that and put a reminder, sometimes they push you an email the morning of, sometimes they send you a push notification when I go live, but it's really, it's kind of annoying that YouTube doesn't do a better job of letting you know that I have a video coming. Kind of like when I schedule a premiere party, everyone can see it, you can't see when I schedule a live stream. So I really don't know to be honest. I'll, I'll send an email, we'll get it figured out. So look at this art. I'm gonna whisk this up and I want it to be a nice, loose, pourable consistency, which it's getting there. But if it were too thick, like peanut butter, just add water. So I want to check that for seasoning. Uh, Michelle Van B, the cookbook doesn't come out until May 15th. It's not just because you're in Canada. Yes, no, cookbook is dropping May 15th, but we need your support in pre-ordering the cookbook mm -hmm. to make it a number one new release and number one bestseller when it comes out. And if that happens, We'll start carrying the cookbook at Costco. And the next thing you know, Art and I and Desi are doing a book tour. Paul, I guess, will be our manager. That's right. right. So. And my mom's really into, into that cookbook. She can't wait she's to excited. Yeah. So once again, I'm going to share. I know I keep doing it, but it's really important that we get these pre-orders pop in here. I'm going to put the link here again. Yeah, we, right? It's we. Cookbook. Right there. 125 plus low-carb meal prep recipes wow. that actually taste good. They're creative, they're fun, they're easy to make, and it doesn't make you feel like you're on a diet, most importantly. Paul eats paleo. Yeah. Paul likes paleo pancakes. Paul, Paul loves paleo pancakes. And that's something coming soon, don't forget. And no. There, unfortunately, I don't believe that's in the cookbook. That's no, that did not make it this in time. In the second cookbook. Yes, will be now you're talking. Uh, need the link for the thermometer. Okay, I'll put the link there. So now I'll take my dressing. This is 100% dairy-free and paleo. I'll dress it around the side. And then, Paul, I'm going to give you the job to oh. carefully, without spilling, Ooh. <laughs> here, just toss the salad until it's well coated, and then we'll check it for seasoning. The salad doesn't sound too hard here. Just What's that? Throw things around a little bit. Well, don't, no, it's not throwing, Paul. It's tossing. Toss and throw are basically synonyms. <laughs> you don't need to be too nitpicky. <laughs> what do you think about clarified butter in the jar? Beautifully glossed. Oh, it smells good. Well, I actually love clarified butter or ghee in the jar because it is essentially dairy-free because all the lactose is burned away. It's grass-fed, and if you like butter, it's like butter on steroids. It's so much better. 
You have to find a brand you like. This is uh, from Thrive Market. It's organic, grass-fed, and absolutely delicious. I'm not a huge fan of the one from Trader Joe's because it's not grass-fed. Or just use a couple sticks of uh, grass-fed Kerrygold butter and make your own. And let's not forget to reference the Make Your Own Ghee video. I think there's a video. Well said. Flav City, Make Your Own Ghee. Yeah. So Paul did a great job. Look at that. That's just a lovely side salad. Oh, wait, you're, you're getting into the Paul did a great job. Don't get oh, yeah. Paul it. did a great job tossing. Yeah. It's evenly distributed. Of course. It's creamy but not overpowering. And now I'm going to do the job of checking it for seasoning because it could need more acid. I was about to say, I thought I sensed it might need a little more seasoning. Oh, really? Yeah. You can tell? Okay. Yeah. I need a bite of everything. My nose is sensitive. I can just try it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Oh. That is delicious. Creamy, crunchy, acidic, and a little uh, nice uh, onion bite there. Mm. That's perfect, you guys. Dinner's going to be ready soon, right? Because I, I like to not eat too late. Uh, dinner will be ready roughly 20-ish minutes. That works for me. Okay. Fairly. So, Art, lamb is a head. Well, Art has a, Paul has a technology curfew, so his phone and all electronics must go off at... 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. It's and a little later in the summer. I mean, we, we have to be social. But it's not summer. As it gets warm. <laughs> Paul's a very, very regimented man. He does how many burpees a day now? 35. 35 That's burpees. That's because I started having some of the Flame City recipes. Ah. <laughs> exactly. But it certainly inspired. That's what I love to hear. Yeah. All right. So we got 339 people watching right now. All over the world. We have Tokyo. We have Germany. We have South America. If you haven't done so yet, leave a comment below. Let us know where you're watching from. Share the video link. Let's get a few more people in here because these Brussels sprouts are about to become the most insanely crispy, delicious Brussels sprouts you've ever had. We're going to treat them like a steak. We're going to sear them in hot clarified butter, put some salt and pepper on at the end, and they get crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. They're unbelievable. Texas, Texas, the big Texas in the house. We got Saudi Seattle. Arabia. Saudi Arabia, awesome. I'm waiting to get invited to Saudi Arabia and Dubai, maybe by the Sheik or by someone who royally wants to invite us on their private jet to cook for them. I'm sure they have a tourism bureau. Uh, yeah, they might have that, but that would work too. But I think a, a Sheik inviting me on a oh, private jet might be better, you know? I'll do the tourism part. <laughs> we'll send Paul, yeah. yeah pa Paul's my... Uh, Proxy. Paul will be my proxy, I'm right? Proxy. I'm proxy for many different people, and uh, it's nice to be part of the team. Nice. We got Indiana in the house, Miami, know. Lebanon. Fantastic. Dude, I hear Lebanon has some of the best food in the world. I cannot wait to go there and crush that food with Desi and Art and Paul if they want to come. Yeah, right. All right, so nice. I'm doing two pans here because we have a lot. Let's come back here, Art, and throw some fat. In the pan, gonna use. <laughs> gonna use ghee. These are two cast iron pans. This is my nice, beautiful one. Istanbul, dude. Greece. Oh, haven't been to Greece yet, but we went to Istanbul last summer and had the most amazing time. The food was dynamite, and it was so inexpensive because their their dollar was getting hammered. So we just had a great time. Jersey. Nice. We got everywhere. I, this is why I love live streams. Where else can you cook live, hang out with people around the country, and interact with them? It just doesn't happen anywhere else. Compliments on your pan, too. Ah, so this is a new one from Marquette Casting in Michigan. Amazing. It's beautiful cast iron. It's seasoned with flaxseed oil. Um, it's a little more expensive than my Lodge one, but it works fantastic. So I'm going to preheat these pans just over, well, medium heat. And then we'll get them in there. The key is to get them just hot enough where they start to sizzle, but not too hot because they'll burn. So that's what's going on. A lot of fans in Germany. It's up late there. Really? We got, Germany is like seven hours ahead right now. So, yeah, that is late. It's like one o'clock in the morning right now in Germany, right? Are they, oh, you yeah. just got a super fan. Oh, Jake the Snake Roberts just gave us $2. The $2 holler from Jake. Thank you very much for supporting us with Super Chat. I appreciate that. Very cool. Didn't Jake the Snake Roberts, he's still alive or no? I believe he is still alive. That's good. I used to like that guy. He was great. Uh, do you make your own ghee? Sometimes I do, but sometimes I'm lazy and I don't, and I use that jarred one. Yeah. So I'm not going to... Actually, Paul, you couldn't help me with this. Ooh. Take the... <laughs> take the... Brussels sprouts. 
and just put them down in the oil like that. Yeah. What time? 3.40. Damn. In Sleepless in Dubai. Half past 12 in Germany. Wow, half past 12. So they're only six oh, hours. Have oh, they haven't done the time. You could do it in that pan, Paul. Yeah. Be real careful here. So this is, check this high out. High smoke point for ghee. High smoke point so it won't burn. Also, for those of you watching. <laughs> so I put it like this. It's like dueling sprouts. Yeah, cut side down. That way it gets nice and caramelized on the cut side. Exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. It's fine that you <laughs> said it too. Sprout off here. We are having nice. a sprout off. <laughs> So we'll cook it for about eight minutes or so until it's well caramelized on that first side. And then we'll flip it, turn the, turn the heat down, and let it finish cooking. I just hope we have enough room here. If there's a Somebody recipe like this on the blog. <laughs> yeah, it is. Somebody told me there's a lot of sprouts and we're throwing a lot of ghee. Well, we need, we need the ghee for these sprouts. You need them. If you don't put enough oil in here, they won't brown evenly. It's all about the flavor. It's all about the flavor. Hey, if you want to do less ghee, do it. I would maybe use a nonstick pan so they don't get burned, but I don't mind the fat because it's flavor. And I'm not eating that many carbs tonight, so it's not going to get stored as uh, fat. It's going to not spike my blood sugar, so I'm totally fine Is with that. Is there a way to cut the sprouts to lose fewer leaves? Well, the key when you're cutting sprout is just to take a little piece off the base, the root end, but not too much because if you take that much off, then it has no more support and you lose even more leaves. But you're inevitably going to lose some. Like people, they need a support network. Exactly, you need a support network, oh, homie. That's very true. Is there enough room for art in the kitchen? Well, there is. I just wish. You haven't kicked me out yet. No. Nah. Art's the man. Art can do anything. That's why we call him the Finnish horse. Oh, yeah. This it's is why room. Art is officially the Finnish horse. He never tires. He's the awesome, loyal, hardworking horse. With Finnish origin. Finnish and what else, Art? Uh, Irish, Hungarian. Irish and Hungarian, too. Very nice. Art represents his countries very well. But ultimately, Art is a? American patriot. Patriot, yes. Yes. And Art is the most eligible bachelor in Chicago, as, lo yes. as well as Paul. No, Art's number one. <laughs> Second. Uh, so, uh, number two isn't bad. No, number two is... Got plenty of respect. You know, I don't always have to be on top. People try to knock you down. When you're on it's top. true. Right yes. At the perch of you get right back up though when you get knocked down. You do. But right. both of these guys right here, you guys, are the most eligible bachelors. Art number one, Paul number two. Yep. Just fine with me. Happy to be in the background. <laughs> There's still some more here, Paul. Yeah, we're just a few at a time. So if you didn't want to do this method with the pan, no big deal. Crank your oven up to 450 degrees. Toss the Brussels in oil, salt, and pepper, and roast them for about 30 minutes until they're well caramelized and brown all around. Take them out, then toss them with like nuts, maybe unsweetened cranberries, and uh, herbs, and all that good stuff. And that would be a good way to do it for a group because it's kind of hard to do this for like Thanksgiving or something like that. That looks perfect. Oh, snap! Um, Maybe she can get you fixed up with herself. Well, she said you're hot too, so. Ah, okay. She's giving equal love. Oh, that's really nice. So I'm not salting these yet because I don't want to draw any water out. I want to make them nice and caramelized first. And we always think about how do we add salt to cooking. If you want to caramelize food, you don't add salt because salt pulls moisture to the surface. Then the food is swimming in its own juices. Again, I was thinking the same thing, but it's fine that you said it. I that's why you're here, Paul Dio. All right, so things are going really well. All right, what's the temperature on the uh, lamb back there? Oh, Ooh, 125. Look at that. We're getting close. Things are happening. I think this could be a perfectly timed dinner. Oh. Right? How long are those sprouts going to need? Um, for body. Probably all in 10 minutes or so, maybe a little more. So the cool thing is that we'll use the same pan there for the garnish. Oh, I meant for the garnish, to sear the lamb chops, so we're not making too much of a mess. And then we'll let those go on the side, chill out. Uh, a lot of work for you, we weren't expecting feel, it. You know, it feels nice after a job well done. To... Yeah, Paul had his first ever cameo today. He crushed it explaining nutritional value of eggs. Now this is a celebration dinner. It's uh, more than a cameo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a big day, I mean, I need to rest. <laughs> it was a pretty big day, I agree. I might have to have some bark things. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Let's go for it, Paulio. Uh, we've got 360 people watching from all over the globe right now. You guys, here's the schedule, what Art and I are doing every week. We do a live stream every Wednesday or Thursday. This week we did both days because we love y'all. Then we have a video every Saturday and Sunday. So going forward, the schedule is three videos per week. We won't have a live stream the next two weeks because I'll be down under in Australia with Aussie beef and lamb actually. But going forward, three videos a week, Art and I are gonna crush it. Paul's gonna get more involved evidently, I guess. Paul's paleo pancakes and all that good stuff. Paul's two cents. Mm -hmm. But that's the schedule going forward. When you wanna know the live stream is happening, just check the community tab of our channel. That's the only way you can really know. And make sure that you're subscribed and then right under the video, there's usually a bell icon. Click that bell and you will always get a push either when we go live or when I schedule a live stream. Sam, Sam asks where you get your shirts. Oh, uh, these shirts are from bad, badpickletshirt.com. I absolutely love them. They're great. Got them that cord. So... Yes, yes, um, the meetup's gonna happen in Sydney and I have one free night in Melbourne. So head over to my Flav City Instagram stories. Tomorrow I'm gonna announce the times, but I'm gonna try to do a meetup next Friday and or Saturday. The meetup is also kind of like my excuse for you to take me around town because I don't know anything there, no anyone in, in Sydney and I want you guys to show me the best eats in Sydney because I have no idea what to do there. Oh, I've never been not to Niagara, to Niagara Falls. That would be fun in the summer. Katie says, I love you arts. Ooh, dog it. Um, I also might want to do a grocery haul video in Australia. I think that could be really fun. You know, they sell like kangaroo burgers and alligator sausages in uh, the supermarkets down there. Uh, do you prefer to use cast irons? Yeah, 90% of the time I like to use my cast iron, but... There's plenty of time where a non-stick is better because I don't want to necessarily caramelize something or I don't want it to stick. I can't cook eggs in my cast iron pan. So if I want crusty food with a nice edge, I'll use cast iron. If I don't care about that or I'm cooking fish, I'll use my non-stick. Let's see. Oh. Say, oh, oh my God, Katie is sweet on, uh, on art. Hashtag say yes to me art. I love it. <laughs> uh, Let's see here. Come to Washington, D.C., the cherry blossom. I've always wanted to come to D.C. for the cherry blossoms. What is it, like three to five days every year? But I've always wanted to do that. Gosh, I don't know if it's going to happen this year. How has Food Network not picked you up yet? Hey, Rayan, I tried out for Food Network Star like seven years ago. I was devastated they didn't choose me. I started Flav City. The rest is history. Hey, I'm not bitter if they still want to give me my own show. Negotiate the deal with my agent, Paul. Pay the big bucks and we'll do it, right? In the meantime, if you want to have me on as like a chopped judge, I'm cool with that. Hey, Art, look what's going on here. We've got 135 on the thing. Paul, come over here. I'm going to have you flip some uh, Brussels sprouts with me. Right. Paul, since there's no such thing as smell o vision how would you describe the smell in this room right now for our fans and friends out there? Very pleasant. Pleasant. So uh, that's very good. Very good. This is what you want to see, you guys. Look at that. That's the color. That's actually the ideal color right there. Look at Paul's pan. He's got some good stuff going on there, Art. Yep. So if, if I didn't add the amount of ghee I did, you wouldn't get that color because it wouldn't be frying. It'd be like charring. Mm, that's right? That's the ideal thing. Like this piece right here is heaven. This one right here, where my spatula is, uh, right? See? Whereas this one, it wasn't getting enough fat back there. So if you didn't use as much fat, that's what it would look like. But it's okay. I'll just keep rotating it around and get her done. But this, my friends, is the best way to cook Brussels sprouts. It will change your life. And if you serve it to a family member who thinks they don't like, forget about it. They're going to love. Yep, totally. But pull a complete 180. Switcheroo. This is nice having Paul here because I didn't realize I need so much help. Underrated. It's almost like somebody's a Brussels sprouts or batch in front of mine. That's right, yeah. I need a video like There's that. There's a lot of myths uh, to dispel. Myths and misconceptions. Many. So, our tell or, uh, Paul, tell them the other videos we're going to make in the next month. Uh, Paul's Paleo Pancakes is definitely high up on the list. 
Mm, I don't know about that high, uh, but it's you know it's pretty it's on a, it's on a list. How about that, it's, Paul? It's definitely on the list. People like pancakes and they want healthy pancakes. Not all that crap that's in the pancakes that we used to eat when we were kids. So yes, that will be coming up pretty soon. Okay, and then what about the uh, more grocery store stuff? What kind of proteins are we going to talk about? Nah, not sure that's. Uh, <laughs> That's been on my mind. I've been so focused on the pancakes. We're going to talk about chicken, buying organic chicken versus pasture raised versus GMO free. We're going to talk about beef organic versus grass fed versus pasture raised. Hey, give Nalise a shout out to her birthday. Elise, Nalise. the who? Nalise. Nalise. The birthday girl's in the house. This pinch of salt, Nalise, is for you. Like the Instagram guy, like that. So now that we flipped them, we're going to put some salt on there so they season. Keep flipping. Don't let me stop you. Keep on cooking and keep on flipping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Beth, she had a long day at work, but she loves the live cooking. Uh, it's been ages, and she loves Brussels. This is for you, Beth. The mussels from Brussels. Who's that, Paul? Uh, it kind of reminds me of that Aaron Sandler skit, really. Oh, Jean-Claude. <laughs> so, oh, Art, look at this. The temperature, uh -oh. 141. It's mission, uh -oh. mission it, accomplished. Mission accomplished. This is why you get the probe thermometer, which I should give you the link for. So first, let me get these out of the pan, of the oven, and you'll see they're cooked through, but because we're reverse searing them, they're not going to have any color. So Paul, excuse me one sec. <laughs> Someone said that? Oh, it's funny. So look, they're actually perfectly cooked, but they but they have no color because they haven't been seared. We so need some color. We need some color. All right, whoever made that Three Stooges comment, I love it. <laughs> right. So I'm going to kill the oven. And then as soon as these Brussels sprouts are done, I will put the lamb chops in here. But all right, let me share the link for that probe thermometer. Because that's the way you know that you're never going to overcook the meat again. Whether it's steak, chicken, roasts, that's the way to do it. Digital probe thermometer. Put it right here. Having problem with audio. Hmm. Try refreshing your screen because I don't know if anyone else is having an issue. Here we go. Command V. Good. Hey, Tom, if I push this button, do the audio lights come up when you talk? Yes, I see them. We got full bars. Good. We're good. We're good on our end, my friend. So grab that, uh, grab that polder probe thermometer, y'all. Made your curry chicken, says Scotty Boy, and he liked it. Um, is it non-keto? It's keto and paleo tonight. The chops are keto. The Brussels are keto. Just the beets are paleo. They're not keto because they have more sugar, but we do a keto paleo blend here. Um, and the cookbook is going to have all keto. And some keto recipes are also Whole30 approved and uh, paleo proof. So if you haven't done so yet, we need your support with this book. Go to Amazon, search Flav City, pre-order the cookbook. We got to make this a number one bestseller. So uh, Costco carries it and all those good bookstores, right? Why did you flip the Brussels sprouts one at a time and not all at once? Uh, you can't really flip them all at once because it'd, it'd be impossible, right? I could take a big spatula, but I don't mind doing them one at a time nice and slow. Some of them need a little bit more color. Yeah. If you find one that's a little pale, you can exactly. another one. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I flipped it over now, and now it's getting color on that side. Not bad. I could get hired as a Brussels spot flipper by other people. Yeah. Too. Paul's going to be off fry cook. Fry cook? <laughs> this is, uh, like, fry cook and training. Yeah, training. Training day. That's what fry cooks do. This is training day, Paul. Well, a lot of fry cooks I know get yelled at by, like, fanatical chefs. So wow. Well, luckily, we don't do that around here, no, Paul. No, 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 no. We don't do that around here. the cameras are off. <laughs> All right, let me get a bowl. To... Oh, Sam, Sam, thank you. I think, I think someone should buy you that cookbook for your birthday, but much, much love for that. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, best advice for keto sweeteners. Monk fruit sweetener is phenomenal. has a great flavor. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, sucrine brown sugar. It is absolutely delicious. It's soft and packable and moist, just like brown sugar. And it's a one-to-one -one brown sugar replacement. Let me give you the link because this brown sugar 
is a total game changer. You can use it for baking, anything you want. Pickies are about done, by the way. Oh, okay, perfect. We'll get them out. Here's the link for the monk fruit and for the uh, sucrin. There you go. Isn't paleo also dairy-free? Yes, paleo is dairy-free, but some keto stuff is not paleo. Or I should say some paleo stuff, like fruit and agave nectar, is not keto. So let's get that out now. Paul, let's, now we can get rid of the little thing. Ah. Let's use, Paul, these guys to get the, the Brussels sprouts out. Look at this. What's going on here? Hold on, hold on. There you go. Ah. Let's grab them out. Just be careful here. It's hot. Yeah, put them right here. And then we can sear the lamb chops in there. So these are done. Like I said, you could do them in the oven if you want. Ooh, let's have a race. Uh, let's not make a mess though, Paul. This is not a it's competition. Like a fun game. <laughs> kind of like Hungry Hippo a little bit. That's what you're following. Yeah. Hungry Hippo, or what oh, do they say fun. in uh, that show? Uh, there's a joke about Hungry Hippo. It's, uh, or maybe that's Frogger I'm thinking of. Oh, it could be Frogger. Wow, I feel like I'm on a cooking show. <laughs> it's probably what they would do. I think cooking shows would spend a lot more time in the actual cooking, not the uh, oh, removal sure, of the Brussels sprouts. There's still a timed, uh, time limit. That's basically done. Okay, so I'm going to use this same exact pan here to cook the lamb chops now. Let's see. And the nice thing is these little leaves get crispy. Be careful, don't burn yourself. Mm, delicious. All right, let's do this, Art. I'm going to grab the lamb chops. I'm going to add some oil or some fat. Should we do ghee or oil? All right, what do you think? How about a little bit of both? A little bit of both? All right. Pan's getting kind of hot, huh? Yeah, well, that's what I want. It's yeah, smoking. Awesome. Ooh, let's be a little careful. bit of avo. I'm going to be here for the uh, money shot. A little bit of ghee. That's a lot of ghee. Perfect. Let's turn the heat up even higher, actually. And then we'll take this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. Woo, let me get those splatter guards. Now, I'll get it. Yeah, it looks okay to me. <laughs> so push down the meat, make sure it's making good contact, and then throw down your splatter guard. That'll just make for an easier cleanup later on. So this is done, this is done. So remember, the lamb is already cooked. All we're doing now is searing it, making crusty, just like we would a steak. But we went the opposite way. Instead of searing first and oven roasting, we roasted first, then seared it. The method behind that madness is that the sear mark doesn't go too deep down into the lamb or that gradient mark. So maybe one minute, max two minutes on that side, and we'll flip it. I just want to make sure. You saw that sizzle. Look at that. I've heard that before. Gorgeous. Still holding these tongs. You can put them down now, Paul. <clears throat> I mean, pretty easy. How long have we been on so far, Art? Uh, 53 minutes. 53 minutes. We're pretty much almost done. You could have made this quicker if you weren't chit-chatting and having a good old time, but that's how we roll around here. Can I use butter instead of ghee? I think that's a good question. Um... Yes, you can, but butter doesn't have quite as high of a smoke point. So it actually, no, you can't. Because I have the pan so high, you would burn the butter and it would get really bitter and black. So no. Correction. Yeah, you could cut it with some oil, but still, it's too, I literally have the pan on the highest heat setting right now. So let me cut some chilies for garnish. Butter has uh, the milk solids in it. Ghee does not, and the milk solids are what will burn. That's the beauty of ghee, and that's why ghee is pretty much okay to eat if you're lactose intolerant because all the lactose is actually burned away. Kimberly's complaining because she missed the whole show, but it ain't over yet. Kimberly, well, you kind of came for like the, the highlight, but we missed you. Art and I kind of came on last minute, but hey, you don't worry about it. Come over here, Art. Let's check this. So that's what we're talking about. That's nice and crusty here. Crusty to come. Yeah, that one not so much, but I feel like the heat is not equally dispersing here. But have you ever used date sugar? Um, yes. We're a big fan of paleo date sugar because it's a natural sugar. 
We also use coconut sugar because that's natural too. So one more minute, we'll get them off. Then I have a trivia question. As soon as these come out of the pan, do I want to serve them and cut into them immediately before they cool down? Or do I actually want to let them cool down for a few minutes? What do you guys think? For whoever just asked, local time is 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. on the dot right now. Okay, I just discovered this channel and I love your meal prep videos. Thank you, Rita. Appreciate that. All right, Julie says rest them. Robin says let them cool down. Uh, Beautifully Blessed says no, you must rest them. You all got it correct. We rest them because the juices inside right now are crazy hot. If you cut in, they all rush out. The meat dries up and you ruin dinner. It's as easy as that. Okay, so I'm going to take these out now. Art, let's come on and do that. And then we're going to rest them for a minute. And I can put them back on the sheet tray because this was cooking in a hot oven. Jordan, you know? Austin, yes. Reverse here on a steak. We have a video about that. Yes. Look up on YouTube. Flav City. How to cook a steak. Four ways. Right? Four ways. We have four ways to cook it. That video was a beast and a half to make. But look at that. Isn't that nice? Looks good. Really, really nice. You can do this on the grill in the summertime. And I have a feeling we'll be eating a lot of these in Australia the next two weeks. Okay, so look at this, Art. We have roasted Brussels sprouts, done. We have beet salad, done. We have lamb, done. We have the dressing. We can use this as a sauce, actually, is a little leftover. But what's so cool about these Brussels is, look at this. That caramelization, you guys, adds flavor and texture. The inside is really, really soft. So watch this. If I cut it now... The inside is soft and creamy, but the outside is charred and blistered. So you're getting a contrast of texture. That is so darn good. No one could eat that and be like, I don't like Brussels sprout. That's delicious. It's almost nutty because of the way it got caramelized in the pan. So let's see what's going on here. My mouth is watering, says Katie. Tasmania. Oh my God, Tasmania is in the house. I wish we had time to go to Tasmania the next two weeks, but I'll be in Sydney, Melbourne, and the Outback. I hear the food scene in Tasmania is next level. Mm. Have you heard that, Paul? Yes. <laughs> we got Rogers Park, Chicago, in the house. That's where my brother lives. The hungry sign, where did you get it? Uh, Desi ordered the letters and then painted them herself. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Uh, we got Chicago, Belmont. Very cool. So, uh, let's see here. Lord have mercy. Uh, love it. Literally about to go cook. I love that. <clears throat> yes, I want to go keto because of you, Bobby. That's right, Katie. Listen, keto and paleo is going to make you feel good. It's going to make you lose weight. It'll get rid of any inflammation, arthritis. It'll bring you down from the risk zone of diabetes and uh, high blood pressure. It just is because you're getting rid of those inflammatory foods and your body can heal itself. Not many doctors will say that because it's controversial, but it will. I firmly, firmly believe that. And watch The Magic Pill on Netflix, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. The food you eat dictates your health and your body. Eat paleo, eat keto, you will feel amazing. So let's do this, Art. I have a little leftover sauce here, and I like to do what they do in the restaurant. So what I do is I put down a little bit of this, and then I go like that. I love the schmear. I'm a big schmear fan. <clears throat> then I'll take a couple of these lamb chops, put one there, one there. Then we'll take a nice big old scoop here of beets. I love plating, you guys. This is my chance to make my sexy food look even sexier because you know it's going to taste good, right? Why not make it look just so damn sexy? Perfect. Let's put a little bit of the toppings on top here. Walnuts, red onions. Beautiful. Then we'll take some crispy Brussels sprouts. I mean, come on, raise your hand if you wouldn't go gaga to eat this for dinner. <laughs> Paul's got his hand up, see? <laughs> Paul, art singing. Is that a Bon Jovi song? Yeah, I remember that. Raise your hand. And then a little bit of red chilies. 
and garlic, and then, because I never, never know when to stop, I'll take some of that delicious extra virgin olive oil, just drizzle it from the heavens. You might as well indulge if you're part of that club. I'm, if you're part of the club, and you guys, give me some love. Give me some thumbs up for this. Reverse seared lamb loin chops with a tahini beet dressing and crispy pan roasted Brussels sprouts. We made this really in no time at all if you think about the amount of time we've been talking. This is paleo. This is keto, the two Brussels sprouts and the lamb. The beets are paleo. It's dairy free, grain free, 100% scratch made, healthy, feel good food. If you want more recipes like this, I'm gonna keep talking about it. The cookbook has 125 plus recipes just like this. Amazon, Flav City, or once again, use the link. I'm gonna do it because I want you all to help make this a best-selling book because these are the kind of feel-good, low-carb, paleo recipes you're gonna wanna eat, and it's gonna make you feel good and look good, okay? So let's crush into one of these. And then Art and Paul can come over here and we can try it together. So this is the best part actually. This side right here is the filet. It's so tender, it will literally melt in your mouth and it's so small, it's like a two biter. But look at that, Oh yeah. right? It's absolutely delicious, I wish it was bigger but. Did you finish with any salts? I did not finish with salt. Good enough. Wow, we. Yeah, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> guys, perfectly cooked, nice and crusty on the outside. And the lamb, Paul, here, try this piece here, Paul. Yeah, I'm ready to be served. And, no, yeah, you, you come over here, Paul. I'm not serving I'm you, but here. I'm not going to spoon feed you, yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you think of that lamb. <laughs> what kind of response is that? Mm, mm, very good. I'm going to thunder. Mm. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. We need to chew our food sufficiently. Oh, how many times? 20 times. I thought 30. Uh, 20 is sufficient. People actually don't need to chew their off. food and then you really tax your stomach and the digestive process. Absolutely. Um, and then the Brussels sprouts and the salad here. Uh, try it. Let me try this here. Uh, Nelsie, Johnny's not coming tonight. We got a full house already. We'll make it up to Johnny tomorrow or this week and you don't worry about it. That salad, you guys, the beets, banging. Absolutely banging. I love that. That is good eating. All right. Let me set up the camera over here so Art can come over and grab some. We got to give Art some face time. I mean, he is the most eligible bachelor in Chicago after all. But I love, love that dish. It just looks gorgeous. Who's the girl? That's my wife. That's Desi. She's a little busy right now, but that's Desi. She does all the photography and videos with me. She's going to be on the channel more. If you are new to the channel, she's my she's better half. busy working. I hope so. Oh, please don't forget to add the info for the thermometer. I thought I shared the link. Let me do that again. Hold on. Let's see. Probe. There we go. Digital probe thermometer. Art, right, can you balance the camera there or no? Okay. Perfect. Yep. Set the balance up, and then I'll pull another chair up. And we'll do a little Q and A. Yeah, what can I answer? <laughs> ah. The new technology is. Uh... Will cut another piece for me? <laughs> I think you can cut your own. Is it working or not? Uh, Too top heavy or? It's making it kind of top heavy. Hmm. I feel very nervous about this. Let's make sure not to shake anything, otherwise it's going to come gonna tumbling. <laughs> we don't want to ruin our audio setup here. We have something we put no, it'll be it. fine. Uh, yeah, what we should be? What can we be like a? What can we put behind it? Like a tall glass, like. Uh, let's just leave it as is. Come on over. Okay. All right, bring that chair. Yeah, Paul, sit in the middle. Let's make it like a couch. Ooh. Family dinner. Family dinner. Where's my fork and knife? Uh, right there. This my suit? In the middle, maybe, yeah. Ah. Okay, fam. 
Should we all have flavor? Yeah, tahini is kiri, as keto. I've tried a few of your keto recipes and they were absolutely delicious. Thank you. We got a ton more on the channel, a ton more on the blog, a ton more in the book. Uh, let's see here. I didn't mix up my fork. Thanks for making our lives better. That's how we do it. Healthy food that makes you feel good and helps stay on your dietary goals. That's what it's all about. Is this recipe a new book? It's brand new. It's the first book we've ever made. It's going to have ridiculous keto recipes that will totally hook you up for meal prep and for regular recipes. It's called Keto Meal Prep by Flav City. Can you please share the link to the brown sugar? I can't find it. You got it. You're my brown sugar. Oh, nice to be involved in meal prep. I mean, some people might even think I'm the meal prep king one day. <laughs> That's your goal, isn't it? Well, we'll see what the fans say. That's nice. Isn't that good, Art? It's so tasty, man. It is kind of my goal. Your recipes rock. Make all of them, make all the time, and the family loves them. Love to hear that, Chris. Is wine keto and paleo? Yes, it is. 100%. Uh, a five ounce pour of wine only has 3.1 net carbs, so you can totally have a glass and not worry about it. I tried your cauliflower salad. It's delicious. That roasted one with the avocado mayonnaise is the bomb. All right, have you tried the. Uh, the uh, salad with the beets, not that nice, dude? Like this is just good eating that will help you lose weight, make you feel good, and not make you bloated and like gassy and feeling sick afterwards. Yeah, some good tea for that too. Yes, I do have the, uh, the uh, poop enforcing tea. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Eileen. She's loving watching cook him. How often are you going live? Art, how often are we going live? At least once a week. At Wednesday least once a week. Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday. Check the community tab on the channel to know when we're doing so it. So today is like a free gift then, because we did a live thing yesterday. Yeah, we did one yesterday bonus too. Material. So this is bonus because I'm leaving the country next week and we want to hook you up. Art and I are like, hey, we, we already had a busy day at Costco and Walmart filming. Why don't we just go live? And what's another one? What's another one? It's kind of hard to eat this. I spilled something here. <laughs> on yourself or on the floor? Oh. <laughs> Paul's a little messy, so. It happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Katie's so funny. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's how it works. No bloating. You, but when you go out to eat, you come back feeling bloated because they use flour to thicken things and bad quality butters and fats and canola oil. It's just no bueno, man. You really got to cook your own food huh. if you want to take control of your eating and health destiny. I so really that's think why it's I felt bloated before. I think so. Even my doctor couldn't tell me that. I think it is. Absolutely. Here first. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, Desi's actually doing some work right now, but we'll get her out here in the very new future. Mm. Uh, Paul's a nervous eater. <laughs> Have I been to Thailand? Yes. Oh, it's, not, it's not very comfortable. Uh, it's junk cereal, Art. Yep. Oh, someone say that? Yeah. Art loves his junk cereal. Or what did say? Roseanne? What's your... Far from the, ah, yeah. Art really wants, uh, what's the new one you want? Lucky Charms with Magic Unicorn Marshmallows. Oh, that's horrible. That is so bad. Yes, beets are not keto, but they're paleo. This is a keto paleo dinner, my friend. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Just ordered the book. Carla, thank you. Mad love. Appreciate that. This is the most amazing channel. You guys are the best. Art is so attractive. Paul is pretty decent looking, and Bobby has decent. great hair. I'm not um, number one. I didn't think I, I was. I made that last part up. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Olga. But hey, these are the two most eligible bachelors. Number one. Number two, ladies, I don't know what you're waiting for. Do you eat raw veggies? I find steaming them is less harsh bloating on my stomach. Um, I eat a raw salad every day of kale, green peppers, uh, cucumbers, nuts, and uh, olive oil, lemon vinaigrette. And I don't have a problem, but yeah, if you steam them, it's a little easier to digest. There's no doubt about it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Art and Paul, you guys are so hot. Katie is hot to trot. I love it. Katie, you got to hook them up, Katie. Uh, we got Texas in the house. What's the difference between keto and paleo? The difference is there are certain things on keto that you can't have on paleo. Fruits and sweeteners like agave and honey. Agave is a natural sweetener. Honey is a natural sweetener, but it has too much sugar and carbs. So on keto, you can only have stevia, monk fruit, or uh, sucrine brown sugar. Um, you can't have sugary fruits like pineapple on keto because you want to take your body into ketosis, but on paleo, you, you can. I'm not concerned about ketosis, so that's why I do paleo. 
But if you want to be in ketosis and start burning ketones and have insane energy and lose insane amount of weight, then you want to do keto only. What are fruits that you can eat on keto? Berries, like strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries. Don't forget about dairy. Dairy, dairy is allowed under keto, yes. I believe, and yes. of course not under paleo, very strict. Yes, very, very big difference. 100%, Paul. Thank you. Notice uh, how there's no information being contributed by me on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> Does somebody know it? I know nothing. You <laughs> should know now. <laughs> Uh, Karen, is this recipe in your book? Um, the Brussels sprouts recipe is in the book. The lamb loin chops is not, but the lamb shoulder chops from last night is. Um, but there's so many other recipes in there that you guys are going to go gaga over. Desi took the most amazing photos for the book. It looks like, amazing. it looks like recipes from Bon Appetit magazine. The photos and the layout and the text are beautiful. We took lifestyle shots of us in the kitchen by the fire eating, by the uh, couch watching Netflix and chill eating uh, chili. Really, really cool stuff. Can you do a keto-friendly dinner, non-alcoholic drinks that could accompany some of your meals? It is boring only having water. It would be nice to have something lively. That's a really good idea. Keto-friendly, non-alcoholic drinks. Let me think about that. Uh, what is a good resource to start keto? I'd say find a website with the allowable foods, fruits, and vegetables to eat. That way you know what you can make and then go to my blog and search keto. There's a ton of recipes there. We got Southampton, England is in the house. Isn't it like one o'clock in the morning in England? Or it's only five hours ahead now. now. Yeah, so maybe it's, just yeah, just after midnight. Uh, I thought raw milk was paleo. Raw milk? Mm, no. no, raw milk is certainly better for you. A lot of people argue than the pasteurized milk but paleo, I believe, eschews dairy. Yes. All dairy, even the non pasteurized yes. type. Yeah, if you're gonna eat dairy though, raw is the way to go. It's so much better than pasteurized. Tonitha just ordered the cookbook. In the meantime, you go to flavecity.com. All the recipes live there. And you go to the recipe index at the top and you can filter by keto, paleo, dairy-free, meal prep, all the recipes on flavecity.com. Mm. Oh, let's see, you remind me of a young Bobby Flay. That's hilarious. That's I'll take that. So he's one of my mentors. I love that guy. Want to lose 50 pounds for the summer. Help with ideas. Keto. Keto paleo. That's how you're going to shed weight like crazy. You get rid of inflammatory food. You get rid of starches and grains. Paleo, keto, and working out. You will shed pounds like nobody's business, homie. Stevia is keto friendly. Non-alcoholic drink. In oh, Zevia is a keto friendly non-alcoholic drink. Never heard of it. Like uh, Zima? Zima, oh, dude, that stuff is toxic. Zima, oh. Let's see it's here. Oh, we got hello from DMV. Like the DMV is in terms of, like the license? Interesting. The T DMZ? I thought it was a DMZ, but it says DMV. Hmm, maybe they're in line getting Watch their license. Waiting for the license. <laughs> waiting in line. 10 pounds down from all your recipes. That's what I want to hear, Ooh. Nerissa. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Uh, I only go to Bobby's channels for recipes. Thank you, Lucy. I appreciate that. Me and my kids love to watch your videos. They are, they hear me speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun when I break into my Spanglish, you know, especially with the food. I love to, uh, to rattle it off. Even though I sound like a gringo, I don't even care. Uh, can you do a video on tracking macros? Um, well, all of my recipes include the macros, and that was one of the most time-consuming things in the book doing the macros in detailed nutritional info for 125 recipes was a pain in my butt. Um, I don't really focus on tracking. I think you could do that through other websites, but all of my recipes have the detailed nutritional info. Oh, DC, Maryland, Virginia. I've never heard of that. That's very, very interesting. Oh, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Paul's ready. <laughs> <laughs> like to watch your videos with my grandson, getting him into cooking and eating. Get him done early, Chris. Four years old in the kitchen, they're going to fall in love with cooking and eating good food. Knife skills too. Yes, knife skills, right? Have them hold the knife properly mm -hmm. and not to chop their finger off. Very important. <laughs> ah, Karen, ¿quieren, uh, ¿quiere escuchar mi español? Yo hablar solamente español en la cocina con comida, condimentos, uh, otras uh, palabras de comida. Solamente con comida. Uh, are most of the recipes in your book spicy? Nope. I don't like spicy food, but they are seasoned very well. So I use spices like smoked paprika and cumin. 
but they're not spicy. I don't like spicy food. I like well-seasoned food. Sometimes they have a little bit of spice as a garnish, but it's totally optional. What does Art's shirt say? <laughs> For all the Texans out there, it's from Chewy's. Says, I did not have Tex-Mex with that one. <laughs> I love it. Scotland, if it's not Scottish. It's crap. It's crap. I remember that. You remember that one? Uh -huh. Donde aprendiste a hablar español? Solamente en la escuela. Uh, media año de escuela y ahora yo practicar son mi uh, esposa. Con experiencia de vida. Sí, con experiencia de vida. Mi esposa hablar muy muy bien. Mm, tu hermano. Ah, sí, oh, sí, mi hermano hablar español muy muy bueno. Tu hermano Scotty. Sí, Scotty, señor Scotty. My five-year-old loves to help me prep keto treats. Siomara. Sí, Qué bueno. Timijo. Oh, perfecto. I love to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Eres muy inteligente. Gracias. Speaking of knife skills, can you do a video on that? Not a bad idea. Maybe like the basic knives you need and how to use them. Because you really only need two or three knives, in my opinion. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> wow, that's, that's different. This is my playground. Uh, let's see here. What else do you like? Hobbies. Art looks very fit. What are your hobbies, Art? Photography is a big one. Video and photography. Art is very talented. He's starting his own business right now for photography and videos. Guitar. Guitar. He's an amazing guitarist. Uh, my passions are exercise and working out, cooking and traveling. Uh, let's see here. I'm down 36 pounds in less than a year thanks to so many great people like you. Yes. Love to hear that, Siamata. Uh, Hilton Health, South Carolina. Can't wait for your cookbook to arrive. I want to come to Hilton Head. I hear amazing things. I hear you guys have great golf courses down there. They would probably demolish me. Uh, love your store halls. This Saturday, Art and I are doing the Target Hall. We've already finished the Fresh Time Market Hall, Costco number two, and the Egg Hall. So we got lots of haul videos coming at you. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I was craving lamb tonight for dinner and almost bought some from the grocery store, but realized I didn't know how to make it. Then boom, Bobby comes on with a live. So you gotta make this Daphne tomorrow. Lamb loin chops, the best price at Costco for Australian grass fed. And then reverse serum, easy peasy, cook them to 140. Exactly. Uh, do a Walmart number two, we will for sure. What up Anna Maria, nice to see you. So I guess, I think that's it. I think Desi is ready to crush some food when she's done with her work. We had a great time. Art and I just did two live streams back to back nights in a row. We filmed two haul videos today. We got the Target video coming at you this weekend along with another one I'm not sure of yet. I'll be in Australia uh, the next two weeks. Go to my Instagram stories to find out meetup details. When I get back, Art and I will get back at it. Um, make sure you continue to spread the love about the cookbook. Flav City Keto Meal Prep on Amazon. Share it with all your friends. It's going to be gangbusters because of you. And that's it. So thank you so much. Uh, Katie will be dreaming of art. It's a good dream. It's a good dream. Don't forget about uh, Paul. Paul needs some dreaming oh, also. <laughs> uh, when making chia pudding, can I use frozen fruit? Absolutely. That'd be great. Um, Indian food, I need to start doing more of that. So big thank you to all you, Art and I and Paul. We'll see you very, very soon. Paul, say goodbye. Later. <laughs> uh, but we will see you very soon. And Art and I leave you like we always do. We say to you.